this is my attempt to relate all those haunted and paranormal encounters I personally experienced in the past 40 years. And I hope to illustrate as detail and accurately as possible according to the actual event. These are absolutely genuine and I kept them until now, to share with everyone. I hope you are ready. Let's begin. In our last episode, Run For Your Life. As part of our Operation Ready training, we are assigned to various attachments to support other battalions' exercises. One of which is the exercise at Tet Kong Island. There were so many urban legends about the island, especially about the hauntings that happened every Thursday night. Due to the immense fear among us, our safety officer decided to cancel the Thursday night exercise, but we are still supposed to camp outside the base. So we decided to park our tanks near the river bank, without any trees canopy. In that way, at least it's not so dark and creepy when the sun goes down. It's about near midnight when the duty crew starts jerking the comms cord. Everyone starts asking, what is it? Someone whispered, I thought I saw someone walking toward us. And then there was silence in the air, as every eye is staring in front, looking for somebody. Then someone shouted, look behind you. As I turn around, I saw a white smoky figure climbing onto my tank. Then another shouted, run for your life. Everybody grabbed whatever they can and jumped off their vehicle and ran away. I sprained my ankle when I jumped down from my vehicle, and everybody is running faster, and ahead of me. Knowing that I am the last person, I kept running despite my ankle being so painful. I have never felt my life so jeopardized before, everyone runs for their life with every last breath they have got. Nobody looked back, nobody talked, and nobody will even pick up anything they dropped. Finally, we came to a stop at a street light on the road heading towards the base camp. Nobody can run any further, we decided to stay put and wait till the morning. It was nearly 5.30 in the morning when the safety officer's jeep arrived. He figured out something went wrong when he couldn't get anyone when we supposed to break the radio silence at 5 a.m. When we got back to our unit, we start to investigate what happened that night. Only a few saw the smoky apparition, the rest merely was startled by others' reactions. It was only when internet information is widely available, that we know. Pulau Tekkong first appeared in the Franklin and Jackson's 1828 map as Po Tu Kang. Tu Kang means merchant, the island used to serve as a trading station for Pulau Ruben in the state of Johor. Tekkong means an obstacle, and this could have been because the island blocks the mouth of Johor River. In the 1940s, the 17th Dagra Regiment and the Sphinx Battery were stationed on Pulau Tekkong as part of the Changi Fire Command a series of gun defenses covering a possible Japanese approach from the east during World War II. Their legacy lives on with the Dagra and Sphinx bridges on the island. Historically, Pulau Tekkong was occupied by mainly Malays and a few Teochews and Hakkas, with the population peaking at nearly 8,000 in the 1980s. Most were farmers, fishermen, and shop owners selling sundry goods. Now, the reclamation of lands has grown the island much larger than before. Pulau Tetkong Ki Chi and the main island are also linked by a bridge too. It's said that back in 1987, archaeologists found pieces of earthenware at what used to be Kampong Permatang. People could be staying there as far back as 3,000 years ago. Kampongs near the sea were fishermen's. Whereas you will see rubber plantations as you go deeper into the island. Back then, there was even tobacco plantation somewhere on the island. While you will find some Chinese cemeteries, the majorities are still Muslim cemeteries. One thing is for sure, all the cemeteries are located near the coastal sea area. That's why we encounter what happened in Tek Kong, it's not coincident but merely a poor choice of selection to select parking our vehicle near the coast. If you like the content of this video, please click on the like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you will be informed immediately whenever I uploaded my next video. Let's continue. Not long after, some of us were selected to be posted to Brunei. Although we most people would prefer posting to Australia or Taiwan. But we thought, as long as we get away to somewhere else, everything will be fine. On departure day, it was the first time that we sat on a Charlie 130. The flight time was slightly lesser than 3 hours. It was loud and noisy inside, we were all putting on our earplugs. 
nobody talks and everyone begins to show the uncertainties on their faces. When the plane touched down on Brunei's international airport, the airport was still brand new, and our six months overseas attachments begin. Since it was a new team put together, we were put through the similar training like before, so that we can get used to each other better. In the past, we may have lots of people to share our loads of burden. Now, it's just six of us. Washing the tanks, servicing and maintenance, preparing the ammunitions, cleaning the weapons, and even setting up the targets for live firings. On top, we are like cheap laborers, everything from cleaning to loading unloading jobs, guard duties, and even preparing the accommodations when other Singapore troops came over for training. Although most of the troops sent over are pretty familiar with jungle training, but the army will always do its best to provide a safer training environment for smoother exercise. A team of us, including some jungle experts will be responsible to clear the common area from any potential danger or hazards, like snakes. Scorpions, centipedes and other venomous creatures. What we do is catch them, remove them, and release them outside the perimeter of the designated training area, knowing that these creatures will still crawl back to their natural habitat eventually. This training ground sweeping becomes a routine, and the jungle experts already knows exactly where they are. We set off early in the morning right after sunrise that day. As we get deeper into the jungle, the ambient illumination gets dimmer. Everything is moist and cool with a strong smell of vegetation and earth in the air. Brunei weather is very unpredictable, one moment it's sunny, the next moment, it starts pouring. One thing for sure, most of the creatures will come out from their habitat after the heavy rain. After a few hours, the rain finally comes to a stop. As the rain stopped, we get started to get ready for the busy day, knowing that we have wasted a couple of hours while hiding from the rain. We only left with very limited time before the sunset. Due to time constraint, we tried our very best to complete the task that day. By the time we disposed all the creatures we captured that day, the daylight is closing on us as we track back to our pickup point. As we were walking, the fog is also gaining on us. Finally, the jungle expert decides that we should stay put for the night. It will be safer to go back tomorrow morning instead. We all agreed. But the current poison we're in will be too cramp up. We suggest to relocate to another site using our torch lights. Even with the torch light, the depth of view is very limited. Moving ahead is painfully slow. At certain point, because of the vegetation, we cannot even see the person right in front of us even with a torch light. Finally, we came to a much wider space that could fit all of us together. We decided to sit in a circle with everyone facing outwards. In that way, as a team, we can see all direction if anything is coming our way. It's a very painfully long night. We know that it's still early in the evening and a long way before sunrise. And all we see is that pitch dark in front of us, and the quiet jungle with some crickets and frogs noise. It must be around midnight when we start hearing running footsteps, as if someone is running towards us. Then, it stopped. Then, there is this thick white fog coming towards us. And, we can hear vividly people who whispering in some sort of language that we do not understand. Although our eyes cannot see a single thing, but all of us felt that our surroundings are crowded with people around us. Each of us starts praying according to our religion belief. Then after, there is this complete silence, but there is still that cold chill in the air. All of us tried our best to stay awake that night, however, 
it has been a long and tiring day, therefore after a while everybody fell asleep. Dawn finally came, and slowly, one by one, we started to wake up. As we started to pack up, we noticed our surrounding were filled with jars, pots, bottles, all over the place. As we leave, we can still see those pots and jars along the way. There were so many, we must have missed them last night because it was too dark to see anything. Finally, we reached our pickup point, where our transport to get back to base camp is waiting for us. What happened last night? We definitely heard those footsteps and voices, what are they? I will explain to you in the next episode of Army Days, Alone in Hospital. If you like the content of this video, please click on the like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you will be informed immediately whenever I uploaded my next video.